Watch out for the shack attack. Oh. I told you to watch out. Make it not. Ladies, oh, if you walk into the mall and you hear somebody say, uh, it's so, so dead. <laughs> Kim Possible, Jimmy Neutron, Scooby Doo, Antoine Fisher. It don't matter what you tried to do, you couldn't destroy me. I'm still standing. I'm still strong. And like Mike, all of these things turned 20 this year. Shit. Uh. You niggas getting old and there's nothing you can do about it except reminisce. Back in my day, we had Katy Perry, Justin Bieber. That was real music. I mean, if you were a black boy that grew up in the early 2000s, there is absolutely no way on the face of the earth that you didn't run that Like Mike VHS into the fucking ground. Starring Bow Wow, Morris Chestnut from I'll God Code, dick. Stuart Little's brother, and London Tipton, AKA uh, the star of that cartoon that I don't watch. Like Mike is a 2002 movie where an orphan gets the power to ball like Mikey George because he dons an old pair of his sneakers. I can't be the only one who hasn't seen this in years, but still has super fond memories of this shit. To, to this day. day. Does it hold up? Short answer? Yes. Long answer? <laughs> Whatever the fuck else I say in this video. Let me hold you, my nigga. This is Like Mike is 20 and you're old. Featuring two people that I'm positive have never spoken to each other before. Because that's just how YouTube works. What's up, bro? This ain't my channel. What am I doing here? Anyway, whatever. Like Mike. It's basketball. It's my favorite sport. I like the way they dribble up and down the court. How did I get here? What's even happening right now? Go in the house! Wake up! Or better, we can see each other in real life. I don't know, man. I usually do cartoons. You think I could pull this live action thing off? Johnny Two Cellos uh, of YouTube.com? No. But I think everything's worth at least one try. Eh, I guess that's true. Hey, but why did you say no? No why? worries, man. I got it. I'm going to come in. I'm going to talk about Jordan just to start you off. Like a wise philosopher once said, you can do it if you put your back into it. Yeah, yeah. Get, get, uh. Ice Cube? Ice. Okay, so if you didn't grow up in the 90s, it's really hard to accurately convey just how massive of a global icon Michael Jordan was. In fact, I don't think that level of cultural impact from an athlete can or will ever happen again. He was truly beloved around the world, even in countries where basketball wasn't remotely as popular as it is in the US. You could see his face on billboards, posters, countless commercials, help. he'd pop up on Saturday Night Live, and then obviously there's Space Jam. They wrote an entire Looney Tunes film around an athlete, and it made a quarter of a billion dollars at the box office in the 90s. I grew up around Chicago in the 1990s, and I was too young to remember the original three-peat, but the three-peat repeat, that was my childhood. And let me tell you, if you weren't excited about the Chicago Bulls in the Chicagoland area in 1996, you were the weird one. And I absolutely was consumed by Bulls fever. I had a Jordan jersey, I wore Jordans, I had a full binder of MJ cards, I saw Space Jam countless times, and I even brought the sports section of the newspaper to school with me so I could read about the Bulls during reading time. I was literally the dork reading the news paper in first grade, but it was all for the Bulls, and of course, for MJ. Because kids everywhere wanted to be like Mike. While you could read that phrase as some sort of corporate branding to help push MJ as an icon, in reality, it was actually true. Kids wanted to be like Mike. I wanted to be like Mike. He made me want to be a professional basketball player before I had any idea that I would never be tall enough to do that. He was an absolute inspiration, and it's seriously so hard to describe his level of impact. And that is what makes Like Mike such a genius idea for a movie, because it was completely embracing the exact thing that I felt as a child, that so many kids like me felt. We wanted to be like Mike, and this story is about a kid like us getting that opportunity, living out that sports fantasy we all dreamed about. It's a premise built around a massive, collective dream that so many kids like me had. Now, admittedly, I think the film probably would have benefited if it had come out maybe two or three years sooner, 
right on the back end of MJ's career with the Bulls, because by the time it actually came out, I think I was a little past that time in my life, and I expect a lot of other kids were too. The film also doesn't acknowledge that MJ was literally still playing in the NBA when it takes place during his brief tenure with the Washington Wizards, but we'll give it a pass. I'm sure he didn't actually want to have much to do with the film. But watching this movie for the first time in nearly 20 years, it honestly brought me back to my childhood. It made me remember playing basketball in my driveway, wearing my MJ jersey and my Jordans. It made me think about trading MJ cards with my friends. It made me think about seeing Space Jam in the theater and watching the Bulls win three NBA titles in a row. It made me think about Michael Steele and subsequent dagger in Game 6 of the 1998 NBA Finals, his final shot as a Chicago Bull, cementing his sixth championship, six finals MVP legacy. It made me think about how when I was a kid, all I wanted was to be like Mike. Damn, that was a pretty good read on Michael Jordan. You're all right, white boy. Thanks, dude. Neither one of you are seeing any of the ad revenue from this video. Once again, today's video is brought to you by Manscaped.com. If you're anything like me, you've definitely gone, oh, fuck, it's almost Father's Day, at least once a week. Now is the perfect time to give the gift of grooming with the latest and greatest products by Manscaped. Your OG might like the Lawnmower 4.0 waterproof cordless body trimmer. It's the perfect beard and body trimmer for the modern man. This trimmer features cutting edge technology including super close ceramic blades and skin safe technology to help reduce nicks and cuts on your skin. Everything's gonna be all right, dad. Perfect for a quick beard, chest, or body trim with a fire ass LED light. This trimmer is waterproof and cordless. So honestly, it could live inside the shower for quick cleanups with virtually no mess. They also just dropped these brand new Boxer 2.0s that are, dare I say, the best boxers ever. I do say. How you feel about them? The perfect blend of fashion and function. These new boxer briefs are the perfect addition to a much needed upgrade. There's even six different color combinations. To be honest, I think I'm gonna give my pops these ones. Uh, he definitely looked like the type of dude to uh, like lines on his drawers. These boxers are designed using premium, super soft fabrics that are anti-chaving, cooling, and tagless, making them possibly the most comfortable boxers your pops will ever wear. They also include the new jewel pouch design, which combines a comfortable stitchless inner pouch support with a spaciously designed outer pouch, making it roomy yet supportive for any body type. Between the lawnmower 4.0 and the new boxes 2.0, this Father's Day gonna be a breeze. Hey man, if your pops nuts Harry, you're, you're a victim. victim. As always, just go to manscaped.com today to get 20% off plus free shipping when you use my promo code Tariq at checkout. That's 20% off plus free shipping with my promo code Tariq, T-A-R-I-Q at manscaped.com. Manscaped, always the right tools for the job. After game. This is like Mike is about orphan Calvin Cambridge. All this nigga want in life is to have parents and play ball. He got this tight ass jersey that clearly doesn't fit him. It makes sense that he has this one too. AI was the fucking man in 02. He gotta live off these crusty ass first Prince of Bel Air reruns. This nigga getting bullied by the nigga from the Irishman. This is a sad kid right here. Now they really do establish these kids in a way where you immediately empathize with the situation. I always felt like the emotional aspect of this movie really worked because you really do feel bad for them in certain parts of this. And like I really appreciate that it's not just Calvin and his friends either that's such an easy trap to fall into. Like even though the bully's a piece of fucking shit, he still feels this shit too. Today's the day I'm gonna get adopted. You ain't getting adopted. None of us are. Let I me mean, face it, we're like dogs. Parents only want the puppy. Early in the film, Calvin is given these sneakers that were donated to the orphanage. Well, the guy who dropped them off said they used to belong to some famous basketball player when he was a kid. Um, which, which basketball player? You know, the, the tall, bald one. But none of this shit matters because the bully immediately puts them shits on the phone line and now it's raining. Okay, so he's sneaking outside to get his soggy ass magical shoes back. They already ruined, bro. What? You might as well just wait till the storm is over. They already at maximum wetness, right? Why do you think they Michael Jordan shoes anyway? Cause they got MJ written on them? That don't mean nothing. You risking your life for some damn Montel Jordans right now for all you know. How would Michael Jordan's old ass childhood sneakers end up here anyway? Ain't this nigga from North Carolina or something? But whatever, Bow Wow's an orphan. He don't care. He 
He just wanted the shoes. Me and Prim didn't even talk about this, but it's crazy that we had the exact same thought. Bro just assumed the sneakers were Mike George, but like, you ever thought about how they just could have been magics? <laughs> like, it's mad MJs. Why he immediately go to Mike? These dead ass could be Magic Johnson sneakers, and there's nothing in this film that disputes that. Tracy, the sneakers were magic. That, that, he said it, he said it. Ah, damn, little mama, my lip gloss is popping. Turns out that those were actually Michael Jackson sneakers. Sorry. Now this nigga moonwalking on the court and he played by Flex Alexander. Oh no, Shad Moss, look out. Damn, let me hold you. Oh my God. We fall down, but we get up. Nice, I got next though. Bow Wow gets struck by lightning and that wakes up the magical power in the shoes, I think. I don't know how the magic works exactly. This nigga should definitely be dead though. You soaking wet, just got struck by lightning, and you fell like 50 feet. Not even Monto Jordan could survive that, bro. But Bow Wow's completely fine, and the next day he goes to the game with his homies, Wendy Wu and the gang. The bullies get jealous though, and they say they're gonna snitch, so Bow Wow lets them come too. Now everybody happy. It's a happy orphan basketball time. He puts it up. Like Mike is having so much fun at the basketball game, he even wins this raffle or whatever, and now he gets to play one-on-one -on -one with his favorite player, Morris Chestnut. Morris Chestnut in the movie. Playing sports, of course. Every movie he in, he plays sports. Bro, I've been basketball playing that nigga, man. He plays with his fake ass, made up team, by the way, with this terrible ass logo. Ew, this nigga played for the Polo Assassins. What kind of contest is this also? Who would ever be able to win this shit? Like, if he didn't have the shoes, he would just be getting his ass bust the whole time. What kind of prize is that? Oh yeah, this nigga definitely died off that lightning bolt. His life is way too sweet all of a sudden. The rest of the movie is just him slowly fading away, I think. Rest in peace, like Mike. It's after this that they try to sign Calvin to play for the polo horses. This nigga right here, he like runs the orphanage. He's pretty much just the villain. He fucks Calvin over and takes all his bread, tells him that he can't get fucking adopted while he's under contract. A lot of real fucked up shit, I ain't gonna lie. He's probably just mad that his son fucked his wife in a movie I've never seen. You think I'm an idiot? That I wouldn't notice that our son is a dead ringer for the guy who fixed us up? So he ends up joining the team and as a result, he ends up butting heads with Tracy, played by Charlotte Galella Maine. Uh, as Webby would say. I'll be mad too, man. Fuck this kid. This nigga dunked on me at a home game, boy. Fuck him. <laughs> so it's here where the film is about a lot of things. It's about Calvin's success. It's about Tracy humbling himself and opening up to Calvin so that they can be cool on and off the court. Tracy, we still gonna be cool on the court though, right? And it also becomes about what happens when you let a nigga that ain't never been nowhere Eat room service. Uh. We in a cool basketball montage now. Like Mike is doing great in the NBA. He got his Montel Jordans on. Everybody love him. How's he not getting injured out here, bro? Everybody's like 10 times his size. Somebody gonna knee his dumb ass in the face. Then what y'all gonna do? This little nigga crying in the middle of the court? You gotta carry him out on a stretcher and shit? That would be horrible. Everybody would hate y'all. This shit is low key super dangerous. I was talking to my roommate about this because he put me on the White Man Can't Jump, which is a fucking fire ass movie, by the way. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> some good Wesley Snipes, Woody Harrelson, I say uh some good Rosie Perez, uh some great uh Rosie Perez. Let's grow. Is it hot in here? Oh fucking loser Mookie! Fucking kid Mookie! Fucking Hector, my she kid Mookie! And the thing he kept telling me, especially since he's a basketball fan, is that these movies look so good if niggas is really balling, like for real, for real. Like you think about something like Roll Bounce, right? Another Shad Moss motion picture, if you oh, will. Oh shit. Well, in it, it is very clear that the nigga Gary, from what I like about you, isn't actually the one doing all them wild ass skate moves. None of it is in camera, aside from a few things that I feel like bro might have learned that day if I'm keeping it a buck. Because of that, the crew is very limited in how they can play with the camera. 
Whatever they do, they have to make sure to hide his face because it's not even him on the skates half the damn time. Saying that to say, this nigga Bow Wow really playing ball, son. Like, actually. Fuck the one or two fucking obviously green screen shots. This nigga is actually crossing up these big ass NBA players in real life. And apparently, they ain't have to teach him shit. So many times things that we asked Bao to do, he could do. He could make the basket, he could do the dribble, he could drive, you know, dribble between his legs, he could do great, you know, fakes. He had skills. Everyone who knows Bow Wow knows of his extraordinary ability to play basketball. Like he plays ball with grown men and can score on them. I didn't know he had the handles that he had. You know what I'm saying? I figured he could probably play since they had him for the lead. Um, but then when I got on the set, I saw his hand, I was like, oh, they made the right choice because this kid can play. Shit. This nigga could've went to the league like his dad. Fuck, that was Romeo. Look at these old ass men calling this young ass kid Bow. Like he run shit out there, little nickname shit. This has been easy for me with Bow also because Bow, uh, he handles the ball extremely well. His name is Shad, sir. Star of Lottery Ticket, hello? Let's say we do this old school. For my sin is just a sin. This nigga stayed dying. What the fuck? But I think that's my point. My point is that this movie looks good. It's filmed really nicely. There's a lot of effort put into the cinematography, especially more so than the average kid movie. One of my favorite things that they do is how the 360 shot of Bow Wow stepping onto the court for the first time mirrors the shot after his last game in the NBA. Every game they showed him playing, it's it's tense. It like it really makes you feel like you're on the court. And they could do that because again, this nigga Bow Wow real life be open. It's the effort, I guess, bro. I just really appreciate all of the effort that they put into this. But the montage is over now. It's bedtime at the orphanage and Bow Wow is going on and on about how cool it is being in the NBA. Bully Yo starts hating on him again and tries to steal the MJ shoes. Bro, if they can fit little Bow Wow perfectly, I don't think they're gonna fit you, sir. Also, how's he getting bullied in his own coma fantasy? That's why. Fake Jim Carrey rushes in to save Bow Wow. You shouldn't have him sleeping in here anyway. That's your meal ticket, bro. He's clearly the most valuable orphan. MBO, he the MBO. You can't have him sleeping in the same room with these hating ass orphan bullies. Somebody gonna knee his dumb ass in the face. Then what you gonna do? Why I keep saying that? Also directed by Disgrace Director. <laughs> Bow Wow goes to Moore's Chestnut House now, uninvited. He brought his little car seat with him too. No, that was a backpack. He actually took four buses to get here apparently. Are they not paying this nigga bro? You can't get a taxi or something? That's crazy, that's hella sad. But he's chilling at Morris Chestnut dope ass mansion now, so it's all good. Morris Chestnut keeps asking why he's there, but he keeps deflecting. You trying to get adopted or something probably? Why you choose him out of all people to be your new dad? He don't like you bro. There's other niggas on the team that actually like you. They be playing games with you? Simpsons Hit and Run or whatever this bullshit is? This nigga's single bro. He clearly don't want no little kids. He always avoiding you. Leave him alone bro. <laughs> Morris Chestnut is helping Bow Wow with his geometry homework by painting the side of his house. Okay, that's some rich shit I guess. They learning and bonding and basketball movie. It's actually kind of cute, I can't lie. Until Bow Wow takes it too far and puts paint directly on this nigga window. Come on, bruh. He let you paint the walls of his house. Is that not good enough? Why'd you have to take it there? Are these niggas really having a toxic paint fight right now? Oh, hell no. What if this shit get in his eyes or his mouth? You laughing, joking. Till both of y'all got lead poisoning and you can't play in the NBA. Then what you gonna do? Somebody knee you in the face. I guess this was the film's way of trying to give Tracy a relationship with Murph. But I'll be honest, that really doesn't really uh, doesn't work too much for me. Not the scene, I think the scene is really nice and sweet, but the end resolution of the film is Tracy adopting both Calvin and Murph. They work really hard to get us to believe that Calvin wants Tracy to be his dad. And they get us to believe that Calvin and Murph both really care about each other, but why does Tracy adopt Murph again? Because the nigga Bow Wow asked him to? Hey, yeah, just uh, adopt this other kid? No big deal. Shorty like mine. It's two for one orphan day. You take one orphan, and then you get another one. 
two for one. Like, fuck was he supposed to Stop. say? Nigga, fuck your homeboy. I barely know that little ass white boy. Now get your ass in that car and put on Best Man Holiday. Now you got two loud ass kids jumping up and down on the bed and shit just because you wanted to listen to your rapper or something. The last act of this shit is fucking nuts. I ain't even gonna lie. Sooner or later, they realize that the sneakers are what's making Calvin so nice on the court. The Jim Carrey nigga, who actually has a very prolific career where he's just fucking around, he actually bets against Calvin and devises a plan to hide the sneakers so they could lose the game. That's a lot of money. You're good for it? Of course I am. Ew, this nigga looks soggy as hell. Delete this oh shit. Oh fuck. Well, let's just say I have a good feeling that Calvin Cambridge is going to have an off game. They pull up on Murph, who's watching the sneakers, and try to force him to hand them over. Where are they? Where are what? The sneakers. I don't want to do this. No! Holy shit, they like this nigga's only picture of his mother on fire? What the fuck? This shit crazy, bro. It's like some South Park shit. <laughs> Obviously, it doesn't work out. Calvin gets the sneakers back, but the bitch is ripped, so he has to win the game with his own normal skill. Not too long before formally announcing his retirement. This will be my last game. What? What you mean, man? I'm ready to be a regular kid again. Yeah, this finna be me. Y'all keep letting these videos flop if y'all want to, shit. Whatever happened to the guy that used to run this place? Biddleman. No one's seen him since Calvin's last game. Don't think that a bet he didn't have the money to cover. Oh, they killed him? They fried his ass? No, no, don't end the movie. What happened, bro? Wait. I really don't know what the point of this video was, I'm gonna be honest. I'm serious, I usually come out of these type of videos with some kind of value to teach or some kind of personal connection or lesson that I learned while putting the video together, but I really don't think I had that on me this time. This is all I got. Like Mike is still fun, it's still a great time. It's old enough now for the people that grew up with it to actually have kids to show it to. Shit, it's old enough for the nigga that starred in it to have a kid to show it to. Let me hold you. Okay, stop, okay? <laughs> and I think it's still worth it. They didn't half-ass this. The heart is real. It's genuine. These are all solid characters, solid performances. This nigga Bow Wow really crossing and fading niggas. Look at this move that he did on Jason Kidd. How is this shit not cool? Nigga like five years old making these big ass Cyclopses eat shit. Like Mike is a time capsule. It takes everything every kid felt about the biggest athlete on the planet and puts it on the big screen. Not only that, but it gives little black boys a chance to live in his shoes, to live out their dream. I'm not here to get emotional, to get you to think about anything differently. This isn't big brain to Riffic Tariq or fuck I miss my family to Riffic Tariq or the new brand from the back to Riffic Tariq. I just really loved Like Mike growing up and I know you probably did too. And sometimes that's, that's all you need. need. Moral of the story kids, if you see some shoes on a power line or whatever, them shit's probably magic. Huh? Wait till it's raining and go get them. Wait, no, my nigga. Get up, like Benjamin Franklin or something. Whoa! Be your powers. Something like that. All right, man, that's enough. Come on, bro. You wildin', man. I'm trying to chase the family-friendly bag. You tell the niggas get struck by lightning and shit, coma. It's like, what's wrong with you? I got a chance on July 3rd to go to the movie theater and pay $9 for a movie that I wrote. And... Bow Wow was a kid who dreamed of being a rap star, and his dream came true. He dreamed of being in movies, and his dream came true. You know, um, at the end of the day, there's something to be said about believing that if you really want it bad enough, you know, it can happen. You just, you gotta believe, you know, and don't quit. That's what I really want.
Yo, he like laughed it off and he was like, <laughs> Who that in my bed? And I was like, Nigga, you know who that is. <laughs> who that is? It wasn't. 